What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a Toon Squid tutorial on lip syncing. So we are going to be actually creating the mouse shapes in this tutorial and then applying them to a character and then syncing up those mouse shapes to some audio that we import. And let's just see how Oh this. no! We're out of toilet paper! Oh no! We're out of toilet paper! So let's just dive right in and get started. I've gone ahead and created an empty project 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second. And I've imported a reference photo for my mouse shapes. Let's open up our timeline down here. I've gone ahead and renamed the reference photo to reference and dragged it below the default layer that was created for us. And I also renamed that default layer to mouth. If you don't have a default layer, just click the plus button and then layer, tap it, and rename it to mouth. What we want to do is we want to turn the opacity down on our reference photo. I like 20%. You can do whatever you prefer, as long as you can clearly see what you're drawing on top of that reference photo. So we also want to count how many mouths we need to draw. This might be different for you, but I have 11 here. So I'm going to drag this reference photo, I'm gonna drag and extend it to frame 11. So now we got 11 frames for our reference photo to be showing. And at the end of this, we're just going to hide it or delete it. So anyways, let's just dive right in. So what we wanna do is we just wanna go through and we wanna draw each one of these mouths, but it's important to do them as separate drawings on each one of the frames. So the first frame, draw that mouth. Second frame, we'll draw that mouth. And so on and so forth. So yeah, let's get started. Make sure you've got the correct layer selected and start drawing. I'm not gonna try to get it perfect because that's not what this tutorial is about. But yeah, once you get that first mouth drawn, be sure you select the second frame before you start drawing the second mouth. And if anyone is wondering, I am using a vector brush, I like the round brush. I definitely prefer the vector brushes because you can resize them without it getting grainy and all that good stuff. It stays just perfectly clear no matter how much you zoom in on it. All right, so that's it for the outlines of our mouths. Let's go through and add some color. One thing I'm not sure if I covered is the background. I like to turn my background off. It really helps for when I'm doing color. If I have the background on, I'll forget to color the teeth white so i like to turn it off for coloring at least let's go through each one of our frames and let's apply color so we're going to do all the black first oops accidentally filled in the lines made them a little bit thicker all right let's go through and add in all the white now all right let's go through and add in the color for the tongue all right that should do it for the color now what we need to do is we need to get all these images on top of one another so let me just show you. So let's just get them, let's get them centered. So let's select our selection tool. Select that first image. Make sure snapping's on, just because that'll help you get it centered. And there we go. And really that's all we should have to do for each one of these. So make sure snapping's on and then just get it perfectly centered. So now we got all our mouths perfectly centered. So now click on the mouth layer and we're gonna create a symbol. So now this is a symbol. If you come up here and you see this little icon to the left of the layer name, that means it's a symbol. So we could actually, with this symbol, keep dragging it. Let's turn looping on. Scale out a little bit on our timeline. And if you were to drag it out, it'll just keep going forever and ever. Create a new scene. Let's rename this to mouth shapes let's create a new scene so now we're in another scene i'm just going to make a head really quick so if you tap the pen tool and you tap it again you can just put in some shapes directly so i'm just going to put in a circle with it selected i'm going to come over here to the stroke and the stroke's fully transparent right now i'm going to make it black the fill i'm going to make transparent then the stroke width, and we'll turn it down. So now we got a head. So now we need to add in the mouth. So we're gonna do that on a separate layer. 
Oh, this also got added to frame 11. Let's drag it to frame one. So let's rename this to head. We don't need to create a layer because it'll do that automatically whenever we import our mouth. So just hit library. There's our mouth. Let's drag it into position where you want it to be. You can scale it up too as much as you want since we drew it in a vector brush. It will not get pixelated. That's great. Oh, let's also, let's undo all that. Let's go back to how it was and let's turn uniform scaling back on. I'm gonna turn snapping off so I can get it just where I want it. And now, if we scale through, let's extend this out 11 frames. Well, actually, that doesn't matter. It can be as long as we need it to be. So really what we need to do now is import some audio. Oh, before we do that though, we want to parent the mouth to the head. So if we move the head, the mouth will move with it. This is basically for another lesson. So I do plan on making a video about this. This is like how you rig something. It's really easy though. All you do is you hit this right here and this brings up your transform hierarchy and you just drag in. We want the head to be the parent. So we want the mouth to be a child of the parent and that's it. So now if we move the head, the mouth does not move with it. Why did it not move with it? I think the reason it's not moving with the head is because when we merged down all these layers on the head, it turned it into a raster layer. And I don't even see like a pivot point, which is telling me that it doesn't have a transform. So there's like nothing for the mouth to follow. So it's something along those lines, I don't know. But I think it has something to do with the raster layer. So we're just gonna create a new layer and let's go to this one and turn the opacity down. We're just gonna tr trace it. It'll look better anyways or maybe not better, but it'll look more consistent with our mouth. And we can use the shape assist tool too. So we're just gonna actually do that. Good enough. Delete that raster layer. And then now let's try to move it. And now the mouth moves with it. So yeah, it definitely had something to do with that raster layer. So make sure you're using vector layers if you want your mouth to move with your head. Let's get it centered again. Turn on snapping. There we go. All right, so now we've got our mouth shape moves with our character and it's centered but we need some audio let's go plus audio oh my god billy no why why <laughs> no we won't do that one it's too long we don't we're not doing a bunch here why'd i make a new layer it's audio yeah let's say we're out of toilet paper oh no we're out of toilet paper. All right, oops. I accidentally hit undo, just three fingers to redo. I was trying to just pinch it out. And one thing I hate about this is you can't, I guess I can do this. I can just split the audio, split audio clip right there and then just delete this one. Oh no. All right, so now all you gotta do is drag this out to be the length of the audio clip or length of whatever you want the length of your video to be. Same with the mouth. Oh no! So you see how the mouth you just keep going forever. It just keeps cycling through all of the frames that you drew. So it'll keep doing that forever and ever. So easy way to sync up the mouth shape or to tell the program which mouth shape to show at specific intervals, we use keyframing. So we turn keyframing on, we go to the first frame, hit this icon right here and that'll turn it on. That'll give you your first frame right here your first mouth go to the next one again be sure this layer the mouth layer is selected come over here hit this icon right here scroll down i always do that scroll down and time is what we want to adjust but something is wrong because there should be another option right here let's go to our library let's look at the mouth and now we want to edit our mouth. So we're going to hit edit and this is going to open up our mouth in its own separate window. And we'll be editing the symbol. What we are going to do is we are going to create markers and set markers for all of these frames or all of these mouth shapes. So let's drag in our reference. Let's scale it down. We don't need it to be big now. We just need to be able to read the letters. Let's drag the reference to all 11 frames. Just go through. And so you tap the first frame. The first frame is MVP. So you do set marker, 
and make sure it's from one to one. It'll always do it correctly by default. So all you gotta worry about is right here. You wanna type in the name of the mouse shape. So M B P. All right, so go to frame two, tap it again, set marker. Frame two is A E I U I. I am not a professional in this stuff. I don't know the proper way of saying these specific letters and their symbols and all that crap. So I just do it the way it sounds to me. So it's ah, eh, select frame three, set marker, tap in here. This one's a lot, but mainly it's S, D, N, S, H, C, H. J, yeah, that's good enough. Go to frame four, this one's E. And like I said, I don't like those symbols. I just do it the way it sounds to me. So just E, T, H, set marker, T, H. Frame six, O, or O, O, or O. Frame seven, set marker, it's F, or V, not B. Frame eight, is set marker is R. Frame nine, set marker, L. 10, set marker, and that's O. And frame 11, set marker, and that's K, G, H. I accidentally put in a period there. That bugs me there. All right, let's delete this reference layer. We don't need it anymore. Let's tap right here to go back to our scene. Now, we open up our timeline again. We still got our keyframing turned on. Now, with this mouth selected, I'm going to delete that keyframe and delete that keyframe. All right. So, we've got our mouth selected. We've inserted a keyframe for the first frame. That's how we want our first frame to look so we don't have to adjust it. We go to our second frame. He's starting to say, oh, so. That might actually be the correct shape, but we want to be certain. So again, make sure your mouth layer is selected. Tap this icon right here. This will give you the options for your symbol layer and your animation layer. You want to scroll down on the symbol layer at the very bottom on time. Watch what happens when we change time. So it's one through 11. These are our markers that we set. So we're basically saying use marker 11 here. Use marker 10 use marker nine eight you get it that's still hard to do though because we got to basically scroll through each one of them and we don't remember which one is which and we can tell that one's like l o it's still it's a pain in the butt so the reason we did all of our markers we can select from our markers so now we can see exactly what these are and that's all we got to do we can just leave that open and we can just go through, scrub through our audio, our timeline, and we just pick the mouth that we want to play at that time. So that's it, let's scroll through and let's do this. So this is like, oh. So he's starting to say in right here, so. Be sure you leave keyframing turned on. That way it'll automatically, it's doing it right here. It's changing the time property whenever we change it. But see, it holds it all the way till you change it. And so now we got oh no. Oh no! But we're gonna finish this. So let's scroll through till we start hearing W. Right there. See, I don't see one for W. So sometimes you just kind of gotta go with what makes the most sense. We wah wah. I'm gonna do this.
But yeah, you should pretty much see how easy this is now. It's just doing all the steps to get to this point. Once you get to this point though, it's really not bad at all and doesn't take long to do. Yeah, I would like to see some automatic lip syncing though in the future. I feel like with all the AI tools that are out there now, that shouldn't be that far-fetched of a feature to see come in the future. That would just be something I would really love for this application. But uh, yeah, let's, let's finish this just so we can see the final result. And let's see it. I'm gonna turn off keyframing. And let's just see. How oh no! We're out of toilet paper. Oh no! We're out of toilet paper. Oh That's pretty no! Good. I mean, I'm happy with that. I wouldn't even edit it. That's good enough for me. That's gonna be it for this tutorial, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it useful. I do plan on making more Toon Squid videos in the future. So if you want to know more about Toon Squid or just want to show me support, please consider giving me a like and a subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.